Now joining us, Representative Michael Capuano. He's from Massachusetts. He's got a very interesting bill called the Shareholder Protection Act of 2010. Uh, Representative, welcome to the Young Turks. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. It's not raining, so I'm a happy guy. All right. Fair enough. I, I like that you keep expectations low. Um, <laughs> okay. So now uh, the Supreme Court passed the, you know, well, they didn't pass it, but they uh, ruled uh, that uh, corporations can put as much money as they want into campaigns. Um, yep. You want to tweak that uh, through passing a law. Tell us how you want to tweak it. Well, for a long time, we've had limited the amount of money corporations can put in. We actually shut them down pretty much in the last several years. Um, and the court has now said the corporations can put unlimited amount of money in any campaign they want. Uh, and all we're saying is, all right, if that's the rule, um, then the question is, whose money is it? And it's really not the money that belongs to uh, the corporate uh, president or whoever might be the CEO. It really belongs to the shareholders. So all we're trying to say is uh, let the shareholders decide if the, the corporation can use its money to be involved in political speech. So I'm sure that uh, the Republicans are against this because who would want to represent shareholders? That's very, <laughs> that's very socialist to represent shareholders. It will be very interesting to see. I mean, we haven't got any Republicans who have co-signed it yet. Um, but it will be, it's going to be a very interesting debate once we have it. We had some discussion in committee, but not much. Uh, we will be marking the bill up for, uh, get to the floor, hopefully within the next week or so. Uh, and once it gets to the floor, I, it's going to be, I, I will be amazed if anybody says that shareholders should not have a say in where their own money goes, but uh, it will be fun. Uh, prepare to be amazed <laughs> because that's exactly what <laughs> I Republicans think you might be right. <laughs> All right. So, Britain also does this, right? Is it the same exact thing as Great Britain's system, or is it a little different? It's, it's, it's a little different. I mean, the British system's been around for a while, and, and, and corporations have pretty much accepted it. But the, the concept is the same. Um, this really was a, it, it, this is not some very difficult concept. This is very simple. Um, if you want to donate to a campaign as an individual, you should do that, and, and that's fine. But I should not be able to donate your money on your behalf. And all we're saying is that this money belongs to the shareholders who own the corporation, and they should have a say in the matter. What's, uh, this is, I don't think it can get any simpler than that. The reason I bring up Great Britain is because I'm curious how it's worked. Since that law is enacted, oh, uh, yeah. it, has there been a lot of corporate money in, into campaigns, or has that made them a little bit more gun-shy? Uh, it, in... it, it, it generally makes them very gun-shy. Uh, for pretty obvious reasons, the corporation, people don't invest in the corporation in order to have political commentary. That's how they, they get involved with unions to do that. They'll give to their local party or they'll donate to individuals or to an organization that they know is going to be involved in politics. But for corporations, they're really there to either make widgets or to make money, mostly to make money. Uh, and you don't necessarily make money by saying that uh, John Smith should or should not be elected. Uh, you make money by making proper investments. And I think that most people involved with corporations would find uh, that they would rather not have their money involved in politics, but at the same time, they have a right to do so, according to the court, and if that's the case, um, we'll have to live with that. You know, Representative Cabo, and I've got to be honest with you, I'm not sure I agree with you. I think the corporations make a tremendous amount of money uh, by getting involved in politics. Uh, <laughs> they buy the politicians and the regulators, and then... They, you know, they capture the government, and uh, we've seen it in healthcare, we've seen it in uh, uh, banking, we've seen it in almost every industry. So maybe there's logic in it. I think more what the bill does is it shames the shareholders into saying, "Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to buy the politicians, etc." And that's a well, harder thing to do. You, you might be right. Um, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily see it the same way. But at the same time, I, if let's put it this way, anything to provide transparency and accountability is what I'm for. And, you know, I mean, corporations who might buy politicians, the politician has to show where they got their money, and the corporation has to show that they donated, or at least their employees donated it. Um, so at least it's transparent. You can tell, you know, who you might think is bought or not bought. Uh, you can't do that with uh, political advertising. You can't tell me when some entity gets on the TV and says, uh, you know, Exxon Corporation thinks Mike Capuano is a wonderful guy, or a bad guy in my case, I'm sure. But um, that's me, who's saying that? And if it's the CEO of the, of the company, let him donate his own money and get involved himself. But if he represent every single shareholder, from, or at least a majority of shareholders from that corporation, then I think the answer is no. If uh, this bill passes and it gets challenged in court, uh, do you think it will withstand scrutiny because the court seems very predisposed to saying 
corporations can do any damn thing they like, and they don't really have to check with too many people to do it. Well, I, I think so. that's actually that's actually the reason we wrote it the way we wrote it. I mean, I would rather I'd rather uh, just prohibit the money altogether or do some other things. But we wrote it intentionally with the uh, with the concept being we know there's a conservative court there. Uh, we know that they're the ones who wrote the decision that just say corporations can use their money. They basically they said that a corporation is a person, which of course is interesting. But okay, they did it. Um, so we wrote this bill specifically to. Um, uh, assume that they would lean back, lean over backwards to help the corporations. And, uh, again, that's why we're not saying they can't do it. We're not saying it's limited. The court has already said you cannot limit it. Uh, we're simply saying that whose money is it gets to say it. And it would be, I, I can't imagine a court saying, yes, it's your money, but somebody else can use it on your behalf. And how would the shareholder vote work? Uh, is, do they vote on uh, ad per ad, campaign per campaign? Does it go no. as, with the proxy? How does that Work. It, it, the way we did it again was mostly this is for this is mostly the way we did we dealt with the the court concerns, uh, as we have one vote at the beginning of the year during a typical shareholders meeting. I mean shareholders don't, don't get to vote on um, every penny that every corporation uh, spends. They do get to, however, say we're not going to spend more than X on buying uh, anything, uh, and and that's what it is. It's a general vote. After that general vote, so for instance, the shareholders say the corporation can spend up to ten million dollars a year in political speech, for the sake of discussion, or whatever the number would be. It has to be a specific number. Then the board of directors would say exactly how that would be used, but they would have to report back to the shareholders and post it on their website within 48 hours. Uh, and, and, and to me, that provides a transparency. It lets shareholders know, maybe not in, in each instance, but it will certainly give them a better idea the next year to see where their corporate leaders are going and whether they want to spend that money again. Um, and we, we were afraid that if we, if we required to have a vote on every single expenditure of money, that that would be an overstepping of the, of the ordinary uh, role of a shareholder, and the court would knock that out. So we tried to, though I would like to see that, uh, I just thought that it wouldn't, uphold, it wouldn't stand up in a court. No, that, that sounds practical. It sounds like a practical compromise that I could live with. So it's, it's uh, you know, in my estimation, I think it's a good bill. So, uh, so it, it probably won't pass. Uh, <laughs> no, so so seriously, uh, I mean, where do people stand on this? Do you have a sense yet? I mean, I look, there, I would be shocked out of my mind if any Republicans supported it. It's proposed by a Democrat, but where do the blue dog Democrats stand on this? I, I, I don't know yet. We have it's it's in committee. It will it will be it's scheduled for markup, as I said, in the committee. I believe the week we get back from the current Easter recess, uh, and, and we'll it'll, we'll find we'll start finding out then. I again. I firmly believe it will pass the House, uh, and there is there is another there are several other bills that I'm also working on with other members, Van, uh, Chris Van Hollen and, and others, uh, to deal with the same issue. It's a little different. I'm actually hoping this bill is a standalone bill because it is so simple. Uh, some of the other issues there are, are good ideas, but uh, they might be a little bit easier to vote against. And I would love to see uh, anybody vote against this. Now, again, if it comes before as a standalone bill, I'm pretty confident it will pass. Uh, and if it passes, I think it'll probably pass with big numbers, not because people like it, but because the, some people who may not like it, once they see it's going to pass, they don't want to be on the wrong side of of, uh, of empowering individual shareholders. At least I think that's that, that, that's my gut. Uh, well, that doesn't mean it will get through the Senate, which is a whole other animal altogether. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, just last question, real quick, Representative. Uh, has the, anybody from the White House reached out at all, a good idea, bad idea, et cetera? Um, just through the back door, we have been led to believe that they are uh, generally supportive, but uh, they have not taken an official position yet. All right, fair enough. It's called the Sharehold, uh, Shareholder Protection Act of 2010. Uh, Representative Capuano has uh, proposed it, and thank you for joining us uh, to let us know more about it. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.